Album time! Uh, sorry for no videos, I've been listening to Twin Fantasy on loop every single day and uh, watching Breaking Bad. I feel like I just need to rant about how much I like this album because I only found it like two weeks ago. And like I've said, it's been on loop. Twin Fantasy is one of the few albums I'd actually liked on first listen. Hey, maybe that means it's actually good instead of me brainwashing myself. Or uh, maybe it's too late. My addiction to this album is minor. No guys, I just like every single song and they've been the only things I've been playing on my guitar recently. It's not that bad. Stop smoking. We love you. Stop smoking. Yeah, this album is probably the only thing keeping me on edge right now uh, besides Breaking Bad. Imagine you're a child, 17 in fact, that's me now. No big deal, but you get into a breakup, so what do you do? Write an album. You've written a couple beforehand, using the lightest sense of the word write, but this time would be different. A concept album, an attempt to write a somewhat coherent story instead of just making bangers. But we're tired of breakup songs. Just wait. This is probably the most well-written album I have ever seen, no exaggeration. Will's ability to betray an online relationship and attempts to comfort each other in songs like Sober to Death is just so brilliant. Hold on to the ghosts of my body because I'm not there, but you can pretend that I am. Or Beach Life and Death's epic tale of longing and desperation, alongside the betrayal of being closeted and afraid. I have always adored the writing style of, this is literally what I'm thinking. Don't make a beat and try to make your lyrics rhyme. Take every single thought you have about something, then try to sing it. Then play the guitar around your words. Be extremely verbose about the story to the point of having an interlude be the third song because the second one was 12 minutes long. And bam, masterpiece. Bonus points if you kind of suck at singing. Every single word written alongside its delivery feels so personal. The low quality mixing of the vocals and instruments fit this style so well, which is why I'm actually one of the people who prefer mirror to mirror over face to face. The way Will writes his songs is so odd, but it packs a punch I have yet to see anyone else pull off for me. Will doesn't just say, let's have sex, or describe exactly what he wants to do to you. He says, let's touch so much of our bodies together, or I would sleep naked next to you naked. It's kind of awkward, but I appreciate it actually, until he starts repeating it for the rest of the song. These are some of the most catchy verses I have ever seen, and this is one of the only times I've been willing to listen to multiple 10 plus minute songs, might I add. But even then, the structure of this album and the feelings they convey aren't just exaggerated and weird without purpose. There's more to it. I'm not here to break down every single song here, but I want to give you an example. Hopefully I'm not overstating the case. This album is very, very intimate. It's about a very real relationship that from what I can see, wasn't the best in every regard. And the album does its best to paint it just like that. It's called Twin Fantasy for a reason. The cover is two dogs doing a... Um... Yeah, Will is a furry. Wanting to be so close to someone that, hey, we're fusing like Steven Universe. <coughs> I think bodies is the perfect way to start off. It's spelled like bodies, but with a Y instead of I-E-S. Can't spell much? No. The symbolism starts here. It's spelled like that because there are two people trying to cram themselves into one body. Bodies. Smart, right? Immediately, this song shows how Will really just can't accept the fact that he doesn't know this person. Will sings, but you can't sing as far as I'm aware. He hasn't taken the time to ask or learn, he just assumes. Will sings about getting drunk and dancing as a distraction from everything horrible. Now he's stumbling over his words, trying to compliment their shoulders and see if he can take them home. And at its peak, now he's anxious and scared that his body's gonna explode, alongside the person he's in love with. It's one of my favorite songs and I'm glad I can read into it as much as I have. Onward! The closing track, Twin Fantasy, Those Boys, has Will explicitly saying they were connected at the back of the head and their minds were the same. 
Well, that's certainly a fantasy. We'll want someone exactly like him. And because that's literally not possible, he's willing to settle for the next best. Pretending! Wow. But this can't go on forever. Will has a short monologue about stopping his dreaming and returning to the real world, leaving this fantasy behind. The song ends with the lines, When I come back, you'll still be here, before leading into one of the best guitar drops I have ever heard. Some people think that this is Will acknowledging that him and his ex will move on and live their separate lives, but paired with the line before, I think that it means that if Will dives back into delusion, his made up version of his ex will still be around. Aww. On Nervous Young and Humans, Will outright says, Hey, I'm pretending I know a lot more about you than I actually do, haha! <laughs> this character he's made is just not even the person he's obsessed with anymore. I really like how Will references a book and takes the time to mention why he made the reference and just goes into a passionate rant. It's so childish, but I really, really like it. There's also a lot of reused lines and variations on this album. For example, the third song, Stop Smoking, is a small interlude after the 12 minute behemoth that is beach life and death. The lyrics are pretty simple, stop smoking, we love you, and we don't want you to die. However, on High to Death, he almost changes his mind. Keep smoking, I still love you. He's unable to change the person he's fallen in love with and is begging them to stay, taking back the demand he made earlier. Though he still concedes with, but I don't want to die. And in my opinion, this is him probably saying that if his lover were to die, he'd die alongside them since he's obsessed. Now back to the main course. The penultimate track, Famous Prophet's Minds, has got to be one of my favorite songs of all time. I love the melody of the riff and how messy it is, something I feel like was heavily stripped back on the newer version. For me, this song really goes to show how Will's world is crumbling down. The song opens with, Apologies to future me's and you's, but I can't help feeling like we're through. Will can finally see through the cracks of this toxic relationship, although resentfully. The ripping of the tape hurts Will's ears because they're finally being separated from each other. Or I guess you could say, their relationship is ripping apart. The twin bruises Will talks about shows that he was willing to hurt himself over this relationship, but to me this was done in selfishness. And personally, I like to think that he's throwing a little tantrum. The bruises are impermanent though, and as they fade away, so does Will's relationship. The lines, but I remember you had a body, you had hands and arms and legs and etc, tell me that Will has forgotten so much stuff about his lover, just being reduced to their body, if he can even recall all of it. He literally he thinks this person is Jesus. He starts to question God again while being concerned that he might fall into love's death trap another time, saying he'd be prone to getting struck by lightning again. And the hardest hitting line for me, I fell in love with my fate as it crushed me to death. This relationship was literally killing Will to be in, but he still decided to stick around anyway. And even then, Will still thinks they have to go back. He says it 17 times. It's really deep stuff, I swear. It sounds really goofy on the outside with the way Will sings, and he writes his songs, but it's a lot when you really dig into it. There are some other themes on this record as well, like Will coming out to his friends, but not really, and just playing, playing it, it off, off afterward. afterward. Another one is his depression that he's still falling into and trying to find a way to cope with it, although still finding life monotonous at times. And he wrote this at 17! I can't believe it, man! Okay, so I said I liked the original recording of Twin Fantasy more than the new one, and uh, yeah, sorry. The new one is really, really good, don't get me wrong. I really adore the new lyrics to some of the songs, but it's inevitable that some of that realness gets lost in translation. Nerd emoji, end of story. If you're a first time listener, I try face to face first because you can actually hear what Will is saying. But if you like the thought of having a band recording their first album on an iPod, definitely listen to Mirror to Mirror. The two albums have some differences that can really make or break your listen, or even make you feel like you're going through a completely different story. He got over the breakup! To be honest, if I could take the material of face to face and produce them just like Mirror to Mirror, I would have an album I love more than both of them. I know this sounds kind of weird, but the new one just sounds a little too clean to me. Not bad though. Why did I make this video? I have no one to talk about this album with. 
So hopefully, it reaches people who share the same feelings that I do, or even inspires anyone to give it a listen themselves and find their own meaning in it. Personally, dealing with a couple of the topics present myself, Twin Fantasy really speaks to me. Hopefully some people watch this. That being said, I'll get back to video games when I do it. Will Toledo, if you're watching this, send me a vinyl and follow me on Twitter, please. Uh, that also goes for everyone else. Bye!